In this Wrestle Talk news, major heat on Jimmy Uso for getting arrested, SmackDown in trouble, NXT's Great American Bash, and more. I think it's called Wrestle Talk or something like that. Be a Wrestle Talk buddy and subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news. Support Wrestle Talk! WWE star Jimmy Uso, one of the most prominently featured wrestlers on SmackDown at the moment, being in Roman Reigns' family storyline, was arrested for DUI on Monday night, as first reported by TMZ Sports. The police report states Jimmy Uso was pulled over when doing 50 miles per hour in a 35 zone at 10:35 p.m. and running a red light. Officers then asked him to step out of the car when they smelled alcohol on his breath, where Jimmy allegedly confessed to having consumed multiple beers before getting in the car. The Police documents state he then failed field sobriety tests, with his breathalyzer results indicating his blood levels were between 0.202 and 0.205, way in excess of Florida's 0.08 limit. This is the third alcohol-related incident Jimmy has been involved in since 2019. He was arrested for disorderly conduct and obstruction in February 2019, where he reportedly took off his shirt and jacket and squared up like he wanted to fight after police had pulled him over before calming down. At the time, the Usos were part of a relative big Road to WrestleMania storyline, winning the Tag Team Championships from Shane McMahon and The Miz at that Sunday's Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Both Usos were eventually taken off TV from July until the end of that year. During that hiatus, Jimmy was charged again with a DUI and speeding, but he was later found not guilty by a jury. Jimmy had previously been charged with a DUI in September 2011 and then for driving with a suspended license in 2013. Maybe stop giving this guy access to cars. Ubers are a thing now! Following his most recent arrest, a Scambia County court record showed Jimmy was bailed out of jail Tuesday morning at 9am after posting a $500 bond. But how will WWE react? WrestleVotes have tweeted, I've spoken to two sources this morning on the Jimmy Uso news. I can say with certainty that a few high-level people in power are extremely disappointed and legitimately pissed off over the arrest. This many times isn't a mistake or bad luck, it's personal judgement. Not good. Dave Meltzer then tweeted, At this point, there is no actual fallout from WWE on Jimmy Uso. The company has not made a statement on the matter either. Decisions, whatever they may be, will be done soon. A delayed response seemingly corroborated by Ringside News, who have had the odd reaction from their sources as, who has had time to deal with it. Jimmy's arrest happened during the third hour of Raw on Monday, and Tuesday was taken up by WWE taping next Monday's episode in advance, with the company leaving the Thunderdome behind after this week. Apparently officials were up all night rewriting the show, so they won't address SmackDown and how Jimmy is used on it until today, Wednesday. Rather forebodingly though, WrestlingNews.co points out the last time Jimmy was arrested, there was talk of releasing him, but the company opted to keep him. How do you think WWE should deal with Jimmy Uso? Let me know in the comments down below because I'll be replying to as many people as I can for the first 30 minutes after this video goes live. Before we get on with the rest of the episode, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this episode's sponsor, Rain Shadow Legends! which you can download using my links below now to your mobile phone or PC. Raid is a dark fantasy RPG for your phone that lets you explore millions of champion combinations, master the game's tactics as you take on bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and the PvP arena. Raid have been supporting WrestleTalk for over two years now. And you might be thinking, Ollie, you're telling me at least once a month how great this game is and the awesome character designs you love so dearly, but what does that actually mean in a series of bite-sized infographic-friendly chunks? Well, I'm glad you asked. Raid has been played for over 12.5 billion hours in total. That's almost 1.5 million years, which is enough time to travel to Mars and back over a million times. Or just to watch one episode of Monday Night Raw. Raid champions have consumed over 775 billion chickens, an item used to increase your rank, which is 15 times more than the amount real people consume globally every year. And over 75 million people have played Raid in 195 countries, which is pretty much all of them. And there's never been a better time to join that community, because Raid have just released five new amazing champions, and there's a big new update coming next month with a whole new rotation of the Doom Tower. With 
two badass new bosses. If you want to get a huge head start, download Raid using our links in the video description below, or simply scan my QR code and you'll get the epic hero Chonuru. 200,000 silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, and one ancient shard to summon yourself another champion as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for new players here for the next 30 days. Raid have been huge supporters of us for years now, so please do at least click the link and check them out. Support Wrestle Talk and raid that raid. Jimmy Uso's arrest isn't the only headache SmackDown is facing this Friday. They're also experiencing significantly declining ratings ahead of their big return to live touring. Brendan Thurston of WrestleNomics is reporting SmackDown only drew 1.86 million viewers last Friday, which was the show's lowest of the year and the third lowest it's drawn since moving to Fox in October 2019. It was July 4th weekend where viewership is typically lower when people travel for the holiday, but it's just the latest sub 2 million episode. Before May, all Smackdown Smackdowns but one pulled in over 2 million viewers. But since then, all episodes but one have been below the 2 million figure. And Smackdown's viewership isn't even the saddest story in wrestling right now. This is The Dark Order. Alex Reynolds, 10, Negative One, John Silver, Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, and Colt Cabana. The beloved AEW faction has been one of the most popular acts on Dynamite and being the elite for the last year. But the dastardly young bucks with their unfortunately very sexy moustaches have banished them from their YouTube show with Tem posting, got kicked off being the elite for being too over and stealing the show. Goodbye, BTE. But now you can help support The Dark Order. Evil Uno has tweeted, help Dark Order find a new YouTube home. So please tweet him at Evil Uno, tweet at Silver Number One, tweet at Colt Cabana, tweet them all and tell them there is a place for them here with WrestleTalk, here with us. I'm sure AEW has something for them though, as Wrestling Observer Radio is reporting the promotion plans to have loaded shows every week, starting from tonight's first touring show in over a year, The Road Ranger in Miami, Florida, which will be followed up by back-to-back -back Fighter Fest Dynamite specials. It really seems like AEW is trying to regain the momentum they had before being bumped to Friday nights through June for the NBA playoffs. Once upon a time, NXT would have just so happened to, total coincidence guys, it's a marathon not a sprint, scheduled their own team. TV special events go head to head at the exact same time. But now NXT runs opposed on Tuesday nights, we got to enjoy their great American bash in isolation. The show saw MSK successfully defend their tag team titles against Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. Cameron Grimes lost to LA Knight, meaning he'll have to be his million dollar butler from here on. Hit Row did a rap. And Adam Cole beat Carl O'Reilly in the main event, bringing their series of matches a one apiece. Bust out the rubbers! It's time for, for a rubber match. But the most newsworthy result was the ways Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell losing the NXT Women's Tag Team titles to Io Shirai and Zoe Stark in just eight minutes. When the Capital Wrestling Center went dark to play the last of the teasing battery charging vignettes, which was now at 100%. As reported yesterday, this signaled the return of Tegan Knox, who's been out injured after tearing her ACL last September. LeRae was so shocked, Stark got to hit the K360 for the win. It remains to be seen how long Knox will be in NXT 4, though, as she reportedly had a tryout match before Monday's episode of Raw, potentially for the impending main roster shakeup. There's no NXT review in this episode, so subscribe to the WrestleTalk podcast channel for Chopper and Tempest's full review today. I hate you, Chopper and Tempest! But why stop at the NXT Women's Tag Team titles? Apparently, WWE had plans to debut another set of belts. Thanks for your support on Patreon, fantastic Mr. Good Old Fox and WrestleTalk's personal ring announcer, Rodrigo Benitez. Former 205 Live wrestler Jack Gallagher, who was released last June after being accused in the Speaking Out movement, has shared plans for WWE's Cruiserweight Tag Team Championships on Instagram. There's a truck that houses all the props that might be used during a weekly taping of SmackDown or Raw. On board, you'll find a collection of sledgehammers, barbed wire bats, even umbrellas. This also happens to be the place where two purple and silver Cruiserweight Tag Team title belts were kept. They were kept there from the first week that the division appeared on 
TV. These belts were stumbled upon by a few members of the roster who may have also took a few photos holding them. So we all pitched ideas to get the titles introduced. The two ideas that were often favoured were, one, to change the rules of cruiserweight tag team matches to the Mexican tag rules, i.e. when both feet hit the floor on the outside of the ring that constitutes a legal tag. The other was to establish three men teams instead of the usual two and make them trios titles. All of these ideas were, obviously, rejected. Could this be the first recorded account of the mysterious WWE Ghost Truck? Title of your Halloween car themed pay-per-view? A seemingly normal production lorry at first glance, but one that only appears on the Blood Moon. One that's far larger on the inside than it would appear outside. Giggity. One that holds the answers to WWE's greatest continuity mysteries. Who threw the pie in Kevin Owens' face? What is in the McMahon family lockbox? And who really is Byron Saxton? So many questions that only one man can find out. Have you noticed how many successful restaurants are theme-based these days? One cruiserweight plan WWE apparently does intend on keeping, although last time that was reported they then did pretty much end up releasing 205 Live, is a big push for the recently returned Roderick Strong and his Diamond Mine faction. That also had two of its proposed members released last month. Fightful Select is reporting Strong agreed a new deal extension ahead of his return, but before his wife Marina Shafir was fired, stay classy WWE, and he figures big into NXT's 2021 plans, especially their efforts to add marquee value to the Cruiserweight title. This might also involve someone actually joining 205 Live rather than getting released from it, with the last ever Evolve champion Josh Briggs making his debut at this week's taping Wrestling Asher Hale. The indie promotion Evolve had been WWE's unofficial feeder promotion for years, kind of like NXT's NXT, before WWE ended up buying it last year. Briggs was the last man to hold its top title. And finally, Don Morocco has revealed on a recent podcast that wrestling legend Terry Funk is now living in an assisted living home and is dealing with dementia, which was then confirmed by PW Insider and Funk's Twitter account, thanking everyone for their support. But as usual with Terry Funk, reports of any kind of retirement seem to be greatly exaggerated, with Tommy Dreamer then tweeting, everyone needs to relax. I just got off the phone with Terry Funk. He is not in bad health. He loves everyone talking about him. Direct quote from Funker. I'm currently sitting in an assisted living place with my thumb up my ass, whistling Dixie, but I don't remember the words. Forever ECW. Make WrestleTalk.com your homepage for all the latest breaking wrestling news and subscribe to the WrestleTalk podcast channel for the NXT review later today. A minor Nukes Raw review yesterday, which you can watch right now. Poor old Viper standing behind me <laughs> going like, what's she doing? But she knows like the same thing she's been doing for four freaking weeks. Why are you so <laughs> can't believe she said that. I can't believe the, the how how dare she say that. Of course she said that. That's what she always does. Eva Marie is the only character in this that looks good. Everyone else around her looks like an absolute imbecile.